Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out Marmoset Tool Bag 5. Now what exactly is Marmoset Tool Bag 5? Well this is like a tool kit or tool bag uh, for 3D artists. It's kind of a Swiss army knife tool. It is used for doing things like texture baking, uh, rendering, as well as increasingly more and more it's competing with like a substance painter for doing texturing. So what we're going to do is jump out and take a quick look at Marmoset itself and then we'll head on over and see what is new in 5. So what you see here is a sample scene that you might run inside Marmoset. It's actually literally one of the samples that comes with it. And what we could do is we could render this in a couple different modes right now. It's doing raster. There is a hybrid option available as well. And of course, we even have a ray traced option. So you can see uh, what your render is going to look like in real time. Obviously, I could do a full-blown render of this guy. Just move over to the render section. Uh, and we can render it out from there. And we can also use this again to do scene composition. So let me shut down this animation and show you how that works. I'm going to use all of the libraries Stuff. You can also notice the library has a ton of things built in. So here is our library. We could do is bring in other objects into our scene. So for example, we need a base in our scene. We move this base in place like so. Easily compose your 3D scenes for later rendering. Uh, on top of that, uh, we've also got the ability to say bring in lighting. So let's go on down here. We'll find a sample three point lighting setup right here, already downloaded three point lighting. Drop that into the scene. You'll see it's added to our world base. And then boom, you've got your lighting set up and your uh, world is ready to go. So that is one of the things this is all about. Obviously the other thing here is you can do, uh, you're rendering out a variety of different uh, ways to render out your textures. But what I find actually even cooler is this new texturing feature. So I'm gonna come in here, we'll create a brand new scene uh, and we'll use one of the sample scenes over here. So you see here a material showcase, we'll go ahead and load that scene in place. I'm gonna show you some of the new texturing functionality that has been added into Marmoset. So you get an idea how this is starting to compete with the likes of Substance Painter. Uh, so we've got Got our scene here again we've got a ton of materials to go ahead and work with smart materials normal materials and so on and here is our base shape i'm going to create a new texture project our texture project is now created you need to actually take your material so this guy right here and we will drop it into the linked materials so it will now show up in our scene and we can go about creating this guy so what you've got number of materials in the world so like again there, it comes with a ton out of the box. You get an idea of what all is available here. So say I wanted to do um, molten lava. Go ahead, drop down molten lava. It will go ahead and download that project out for us. And then we can go ahead and drop that into our scene like so. So now, give it a second. Boom, we have molten lava preview of our object to work with. Very nice. So now we can start doing things like layering. Again, if you ever used Mixamo's mixer, um, sorry, not Mixamo, um, Quixel's mixer, uh, which Epic Games seems to have kind of started building into Unreal Engine and abandoned as a 3D project, you get an idea of exactly how this is going to work. So I could do is take another object into our scene, or I could do a smart material if I wanted. Again, a ton of those available as well, but we'll stick with standard materials for today. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in some aluminum foil. So boom, we now have our molten lava and our aluminum foil. Obviously you can't see the aluminum foil because the molten lava is covering it. So I can go ahead and swap those. So let's move that to the top and then boom, now you're seeing all the aluminum foil. I can drop that back down to the bottom. And now what we can basically do is we're gonna go ahead, this guy right here, we will add a uh, black fill layer. So a black mask like that. And what that's gonna do is mask out everything in its entirety. So now we've got uh, our entire painting tools over here. So I'm gonna go here with our layer selected, go here, create a new paint layer, and now we can start bringing it in. So here we go, another area where you're gonna notice there is a ton of functionality here. We also have a number of brushes. So if I wanna do fill up screws or paint or mold or whatever, let's go ahead and we will use chalk. So let's drop in chalk as our material over here. Let's make our brush bigger. You see, we got our paint tools up over here. And now we can start painting out certain areas and boom, our underlying lava starts showing up. So this guy now has, again, the scene composition, the rendering tools, and increasingly these new um, texturing tools here as well for creating uh, your material. And again, one of the big things here is just the sheer library of things that are in here. So if we wanted to, uh, we could have done a smart mask here. If we just wanted to add dirt into our scene, we could have just dragged that in as a mask over our object and dropped it into the scene like so. And then that would apply as a uh, filter layer there. Uh, very very handy, useful tools here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is in Marmoset 5. 
So if you're interested, again, there is a 30-day trial available. It is at marmoset.co.co. Uh, if you're wondering about how much this thing costs, uh, don't worry, you're seeing subscription. I know a lot of you hate subscription, but look over here on the right. There's also this one, it's a perpetual license. Uh, so over here, you could do, um, $19 a month, or you can do $3.99. That is for an individual. If you are in a studio, the prices go up quite a bit. And if you are in a school, the prices go down uh, quite a bit. So that is uh, the various different purchasing options for Marmoset itself. Let's take a look at the release notes. There is quite a bit in this release, uh, so we're just gonna jump right into it. So here's a summary of all the new stuff. The big things I wanna point out before we get into the specifics here, UDIM is a big thing. UDIM is a way of having uh, basically multiple UV maps on the same object. It makes splitting up more complex details a lot easier. So basically it's multiple texture sets for a single object. Uh, then we got texturing and painting, a number of new tools there. Same with rendering and then the other one that you see here is you now have support for Apple native silicon, which is quite nice. So again, you can license it in a couple different ways. There is a 30 day free trial available. So now we're gonna take a look at the various different things. So in the baking side of things, uh, obviously you have the new support for UDIM textures. So uh, achieve incredible levels of detail by picking high resolution textures for multiple UDIM tiles simultaneously. Commonly used in film industry, UDIMs offer a way to split your UV layouts into multiple tiles with a texture set for each tile. It makes it easy to manage complex high resolution texture data. UDIM tiles can be generated to maximize detail or make complex UV layouts easier uh, layout sorry easier to work with by grouping them by object or material type we also have interactive baking we uh, can see the effects of it in action right here so as you are baking you can actually keep changing things and you'll actually see the results of your uh, updates in real time with the bake that you are working on uh, then we've got bevel shader baking this is pretty cool for uh, if you are working with hard surface modeling uh, you can uh, so the description is massively increase the efficiency of your asset creation process by applying bevels to simplify high poly meshes. Say goodbye to control loops. You no longer need to create complex time consuming subdivision models to add rounded edges to your normal maps. Bevels are baked to the ambient occlusion and curvature maps as well, making it easy to use the bevel workflow as a replacement for high polygon modeling uh, in your baking and texturing process. Uh, in the texturing side of things, again, UDIM is part of it again. So you can see there's the multiple different texture sets for the single object. Uh, we've also added a vector layer. So as we saw earlier on when I did the, um, the, the painting, the hand painted layer for my mask there, you can also now do it with vectors. You can see the effects of them right there as they're doing this scoring around the outside edge. Basically your shape, your painting with mathematics essentially is how this works. So it uh, gives you the ability to draw and edit vector shapes that wrap around your mesh in 3D. Uh, and then we have sync points. Sync points um, unlock a revolutionary new workflow, allowing you to add a geometric detail that influences other layers in your texture project. So you can save countless hours by drawing your details in tool bag rather than modeling them in your 3D application. Uh, then we move on here so you can generate uh, missing input maps. This is actually kind of neat. So if your model doesn't have, for example, uh, an ambient occlusion map or a curvature map, the system will automatically create it for you as long as you provided a normal map. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, and then we go into carve groups. Carve groups is kind of a cool way of having it. So if you've got a, an effect that cuts across multiple shapes, uh, you can use a carve group for that. So a new group type that allows you to blend multiple layers using a single height style blend mask. Carve groups can be used in combination with sync points to create smart surface aware dirt erosion and wear effects that carve through the material layers, save time and simplify your workflow. You no longer need to duplicate and carefully manage individual masks by for related layers when building interconnected effects. Then we have the clone tool. Clone tool is pretty straightforward. Pick an object in the scene, click it, click the clone tool icon over here, and then boom, draw said object. So here you can see, grabs the bolt, clicks it, clones it, draws bolts in the scene, clicked another one, and cloned it. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, we have anisotropic directional map painting. This is used for... Um, Direction maps can be used to define the reflection directions for surfaces like hair and brushed metal. Uh, recolor adjustment layers. This is available over here. So you see, click down, no, wrong one. There, recolor, right available there. Uh, this one gives you the ability to um, the provide several methods for adjusting the colors of layers in your texture project. You can see right there. Uh, then on top of that, fill layer recoloring for its improved, multiple selection material ID improvements. And then on the rendering side of things, you got UDIM support for materials. Uh, again, uh, UDIM support kind of was added across the board. So it, it influences and affects all the different areas of the, um, the tool from texturing to setup to, of course, rendering. Uh, we have the hybrid rendering support. 
again, I'm not fully sure I understand this one. It's sort of a, a split between the ray tracing and the the other the raster renderer, uh, but I just didn't see it, it. I don't know why you would just use ray tracing unless maybe it's a hardware thing. So it splits the rendering of various lighting passes, so shadows, global illumination, reflections, so they can be independently denoised. Lighting data from previous frames is reprojected, further reducing noise and providing a smoother, more game engine-like experience. It's just, in my personal experience with working with it, uh, I just found that the um, the the other modes just work better. Like I I don't I don't know. Maybe this is just a um, a thing that is lost on me. If if you know why this would be better than just I don't know leaving it on ray tracing where the performance is fine. Uh, maybe it's when you get into super complex scenes, the performance difference comes in. Not 100% certain on that particular new feature, but that is a new option that is available there. And then we've got material layering, so it makes it possible to create. Oops, Try that again. Uh, it makes it possible to create complex blended multi-material effects. This can be used for a wide range of purposes from dynamic variations of props or characters to large assets like buildings and terrain. Traditional techniques like masking and a secondary UV set are supported. Triplanar projections and vertex color blending uh, can be configured for completely UV-less workflows as well. Uh, as you can see it in action over there. Again, the bevel shader uh, for making sharp edges there. Uh, makes it easier to round over hard edges of your objects to give them a more natural, realistic appearance. Adding bevel to the materials can significantly simplify the modeling process, allowing you to create detailed hard surface models without the need to complex and time-consuming hard surface modeling techniques. Uh, bevels can also be baked. Uh, groom hair rendering support in there as well. Triplanar materials. Uh, procedural skies have been added in as well. Uh, revamp rendering up to 10 times faster ray tracing. Uh, AGX tone mapping, so you can see AGX versus linear, and the results right there. Funny thing, I like the richer. I, I've never been a huge fan on the results that AGX gives, but uh, let me know which one you prefer. Now, the nice thing is if you're using AGX in your game engine and you're using AGX in your, say, DCC tool, nice to have it everywhere so you should have a consistent lighting system. Uh, we've got some updates to the UI as well, uh, progress bar improvements, and again, Napple, uh, Napple, uh, native Apple silicon support was added as well. So once again, if you're interested, there is a free trial available for Marmoset, but that was Marmoset tool bag. Five. Again, a bit of a Swiss Army tool for 3D artists. It's been around for years. It is beloved by many. Uh, let me know what you think. I do think from what I'm seeing here, they really do seem to have Substance Painter and Substance Designer in their sites as kind of providing an alternative there, especially with that massive library of materials in place. So uh, let me know, are you using Marmoset now? Are you considering it for the future? Uh, hopefully this was interesting. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.